Hey, what's up everybody? This is Mike. Welcome back to another video. I hope you're doing well. And today we are going to do one of these Q&A videos, which I'm a huge fan of, simply because they allow me to communicate with you guys, get to know what topics you're interested in, and hopefully I can give you all the answers to the questions that you have asked. And yesterday I asked you on my Instagram stories and also on my YouTube community tab, what questions do you have, what you want to know, and you guys just killed it, especially on Instagram. You guys are literally on fire recently on Instagram. So uh, if you are not following me there, make sure you do because I post a lot of behind the scenes content there on my stories. And if you want to keep up with what I do on a daily basis, that might be a good idea to follow me there. But with that being said, let's start with the questions. So let's start with the first question, which is what's your biggest advice for cinematic videos for beginners? Because I really suck. I would say my biggest advice for making cinematic videos is to find inspiration first. Uh, personally, when I started making my YouTube videos, I was completely uh, amateur with my camera in my hands. I didn't know anything about frame rates, shutter speed, aperture, anything like that. Uh, but of course, slowly but surely, if you're interested enough, you will find a way to learn what these mean, how do, you, how do they affect your footage. And once you start watching other people's videos and not just watching them for the content, but watching them frame by frame, analyzing how they did something, how they shot it, from what angle they shot that, that footage, uh, you start creating an image in your head that is slowly but surely going to improve your skills because you are trying to mimic you know, the people who are inspiring you, of course, not copying them, but just taking them as inspiration. And I've done that too. I have watched so many movies and YouTube videos and even commercials on TV and just analyzing how the footage looks like. And then, of course, it's time for you to start practicing. Uh, it's not something that you have never heard before, I'm sure. Many creators uh, are swearing by this that you just need to create. And that's my biggest uh, advice to you. Just keep going and uh, do more because as you develop your um, your skills, you're going to get better for sure. You're going to learn what works best for you. Uh, what is your style? What is your inspiration? What is your look that you're trying to achieve? And, uh, and you'll learn from that. So my advice <laughs> summarized is um, get inspired from other creators, learn um, and see what they are doing. Try to recreate it. Find your own style and just keep practicing and keep creating and you'll you'll get better in no time, I'm sure. The next question we have is, is FPV the future of drones? And what do you think about the future of DJI? I don't really think FPV is going to completely replace regular drones, but uh, I think FPV is only going to get better and uh, uh, more popular among creators of all kinds. And it's not uh, unusual that we are seeing so many creators jumping into FPV, just like I did. Uh, simply because now the technologies are advancing so quickly with the new DJI FPV system. We are having HD video. Uh, everything is so clear compared to analog flying. And uh, yeah, many people are really intrigued about that. So with the stabilization of GoPro cameras and the new Insta360 ONE-R, we are going to see so many cameras being attached to FPV drones and the type of footage that you can get uh, with these drones is just something else. So in terms of the future of drones, I think FPV is going to dominate uh, in the future, but it's not going to completely replace regular drones such as the Mavics and the Phantoms and the Autel Evos and stuff like that, because these all have different purposes. If you're looking for creating amazing photography with a drone, then of course you won't be able to do that with an FPV drone. But if you want to go through uh, tight spaces and you want to uh, create shots that are completely mind blowing, then of course FPV is the way to go. And as far as the future of DJI, I can see them dominating the market even more because I'm sure they're working on an improved version of the DJI FPV system already uh, as they're trying to steal all the FPV pilots for themselves. Um, I'm sure they're working on the Mavic 3 and all sorts of other products. So yeah, I, I, see, I see them as a dominant factor in 
uh, this area for a long period of time. The next question we have is, when are you getting Skydio 2? I really don't know because uh, as of right now, Skydio 2 is not offered in Europe. I reached out to Skydio to ask them whether they're planning to release it in Europe soon. And they told me that they plan to do that sometime in 2020, but when more uh, exactly, we don't know. So uh, until we have more information, I just don't know what to tell you. Next up, how are you able to know what shutter you're using and what ND filter to put even before you take off with your drone? It's really a matter of practicing because um, as you get used to flying with an ND filter on your drone, you start remembering which filter works best for the specific light conditions. So normally if it's cloudy, I use ND8. If it's a bit brighter, I use ND16 or it's, if it's really sunny, I use ND32. And if it's super, super bright and I plan to shoot directly at the sun, I use ND64. As far as shutter speed, I never move my shutter speed from anything which is not double my frame rate. So if I shoot in 30 frames per second, I use my shutter as one over 60. And if I shoot in 24 frames per second, I use a shutter of one over 50 of a second. So something which might be helpful for you is if you want to decide what filter to use, you can simply aim the drone towards the object that you want to film straight from the ground. And you can see how bright it is in that area. You can just put one filter and see how well exposed this object is going to be. Uh, and then in case it's not enough, you need to go back and change your filter. But generally I don't play with, with filters that much. I tend to use 16 and 32 the most because I normally shoot in brighter conditions when it's um, sunny outside. Uh, I think once you fly a bit more with your drone, you will get used to the filters that you need very, very quickly. The next one is, are you planning to make a video on Insta360 ONE R and mount it on your drone? Yes, I do plan to make this video for you guys as I'm really interested in that, but I don't have the ONE R yet. Uh, I was debating whether I should order it or not, but I was told by Insta360 that they will send me one for review very soon. How soon would that be? I don't know, but uh, uh, I have so many things that I'm planning to buy that I just decided not to buy it for now until they send me one for review. So until that happens, we'll have to wait. But once it arrives, I will of course test it, especially on my FPV drone. That would be very interesting for me to see how the flow state stabilization will work on an FPV drone. And it might even replace my GoPro. Speaking of GoPro, uh, the next question is, did you manage to fix the GoPro? So that question is coming from a person who is following my stories as um, he knows that I had some issues with my GoPro. It just randomly froze and I was unable to turn it back on. I tried everything I could. I tried connecting it to power source without the battery, without the SD card. I tried everything I could find on the internet um, about how to fix a dead GoPro, but it just won't turn on. Uh, it randomly froze and it won't turn on now. So I went back to the store where I bought it from and they told me that unfortunately they need to inspect the camera to see what's wrong with it. And um, once they understand what's going on, they can give me a solution. Maybe they will give me a new one or repair this one, but that can take up to 30 days. So that's a huge bummer for me as I was counting on this camera. There's some, uh, there some really cool events that I was planning to shoot with my FPV drone very soon. So now I'm not sure if I'll be able to do that, but I might have a solution to this problem. I don't want to say anything as I don't know if it's going to happen yet, but I might get another camera before uh, this one is fixed. So we'll see, but uh, yeah, for now, my GoPro Hero 7 Black is dead. Suggest an FPV drone for beginners. So I get this question a lot and it's really hard to answer because there are so many different types of FPV quadcopters. You can go racing, you can go just freestyle or even the cinematic route. And depending on your needs, there are different parts, different configurations that you can go for. And it's also the topic of whether you should build it on your own or buy a pre-built one. Personally, at first, I didn't know anything about FPV. I didn't feel comfortable building it on my own, especially that I didn't know anyone who can help me if I have any issues when building it. So I decided to buy a pre-built one, uh, but with the knowledge that I have already, 
after flying for almost two months or a month and a half, I would probably go and build it myself. And also uh, I have met some awesome guys from my local FPV community here. And these people are of course able to help me if I have any issues. So my advice is to watch a couple of tutorials on how to build your own drone. See if that works for you. If you can build it on your own, maybe do that. And if not, find a local FPV community, go and meet the, these guys, um, stay with them while they fly, ask them some questions. They'll be uh, really friendly, I'm sure, as most people in the FPV community are really great and they're always ready to help if you have any questions. And then you can just uh, decide what works best for you. The next question we have is, can you give a tip guide on how to find great places to fly? I live in a suburban area and I don't want to tick off my neighbors by flying my drone over their houses. That's a great question and uh, I personally don't think it's that interesting to fly near your house anyway, so I would advise you to search for interesting places around your city, maybe outside the city if you have uh, different parks or different areas which are uh, okay to fly. So what I tend to do is I have a long list on my phone with different uh, parks, different beaches, different places where I would want to go uh, whenever the situation is right. Uh, and I try to tick them one by one and uh, just go and create some great looking footage there. So uh, what I would advise you to do is to just search what interesting places you have near your city. Um, potentially outside the city is best because you're not going to have that many people uh, around you. You're not going to scare anyone. And uh, generally it's going to be safer to fly outside the city. And don't forget that even the most regular boring places sometimes look really interesting from above simply because the different perspective that the drone is going to give. So make sure you just explore what you have around you. I'm sure there are plenty of interesting places um, and beautiful ones as well. The next question we have is what to do when flying close to birds. I get so nervous and anxious when I see birds near. I know I'm an intruder in their space, but is there anything that can make me more comfortable when flying in these situations? Also without harming any birds. Greetings from Mexico. That's a really tough one because you really don't know what you're dealing with until it's too late in some situations. I had a friend who um, lost his Phantom 4 because of a flock of seagulls. Um, which was really aggressive towards the drone. In most situations, I try to fly with a spotter. So uh, if there is something going on around the drone while I'm focusing on my phone and trying to get the shot, my spotter can um, help me out by saying, hey, there is a really um, aggressive flock of birds trying to get close to your drone, watch out. And in that case, what you need to do is to raise the throttle all the way up so it can uh, go up in altitude and uh, escape the birds because they are a bit slower when they have to uh, go up in the sky. And from then on, you need to activate sport mode and try to escape. And the most safest thing to do is to land as soon as possible and to observe um, how the birds are going to, uh, to react. If they're aggressive birds where you plan to, to fly, I would advise you to go back another time or just go back uh, another day. Um, if you want to protect the birds and the drone, of course, it's safer to not fly in these conditions. The next question we have is, what was your first drone? My first ever drone was the DJI Phantom 3 Standard and it was a complete disaster. I almost crashed it on my first ever try. I didn't read the manual. I, I thought I knew what I was doing, but I didn't know what I was doing. The shots that I was able to get while owning this drone was just terrible. I was just going forward and backward, just rotating the camera around like uh, I'm on a tower or something. So um, yeah, my first impressions of, of flying a drone were not that great because the range was so bad. The signal was bad and the camera quality was not good. You know, uh, it was not that great, but I'm so glad I didn't give up on this great hobby because when the DJI Spark was announced, I bought it straight away. Wow, it, it, the, the only thing I can say is that it's really tiny. I knew it's tiny, but this is a lot smaller than I expected. And uh, the rest is history. This is how my YouTube channel started. Next question we have is, do you take single shots or are you bracketing your images? Also, any tips for sharper images? I tend to use automatic 
exposure bracketing, so AEB, um, for most of my shots, I would say 90% of my shots, uh, simply because they give you that HDR look which you can create by stitching those photos together in Lightroom and then you have so much more data to work with so I would advise you to give this uh, setting a try use AEB and uh, normally I tend to use three photos and not five uh, I used to use five but I just don't see the huge difference between three and five photos anymore so I switched to three photos so I just stitched those three images together in Lightroom and that's why my images sometimes look a bit sharper because they just have more information to work with so the highlights are not blown out the shadows are not too dark and generally the exposure is just right and the last question for today's video because I think this is going to be very long is have you ever had any problems or, or bad encounters with people while flying a drone? And what's your advice if you would run into trouble with a problematic encounter? Personally, I've never had any negative encounters with people while flying my drone. Uh, in most cases, people are just curious, what are you doing and how the drone is flying? Does it have a camera? What's the range? How much does it cost? You know, the usual questions and they just are curious what you're seeing on your screen. So as soon as you show them, they are so, so intrigued, so interested. Uh, as a matter of fact, I have gained quite a lot of new followers on my channel by simply talking to them and showing them my screen. And they were like, wow, you so you're making videos with, with your drone. Where are you uploading them? Can I follow you? And then they do. So educate them, show them there is nothing to be afraid of, show them there is nothing wrong with flying a drone, show them what's possible uh, to capture with this drone. And I'm sure in many situations they will appreciate that and uh, they will leave with positive uh, thoughts afterwards and there you guys have it these are all the questions that I have time for in today's video I'm sorry if I couldn't answer your specific question but I just got so many and I had to pick the best ones so uh, thank you so much for asking your questions and for being part of this community I really love talking to you guys in those videos so I'll keep making them because I see that you guys enjoy them so thank you once again and I'll see you in the next one ciao